He had gotten around some, you know, unsavory characters. He was an unsavory character himself. And he just wasn't meant to be a father. My mom was super young and uh, he was gone. And that was it. And what that did for me, now that I can look back on it, while it was hectic, it brought every thing in my life because it gave me like a bit of a chip on my shoulder. And it kind of made me, it put me in scenarios of like working and different thoughts and like what I, that I needed to succeed and I needed to do something different. I want to turn out like him. And there were times where I was going to be like him. And there were all these different things that I had learned from that lesson. So as I grow older, I look back on it and it was tumultuous. I mean, I remember at a young age, um, there are a lot of weird things that happen now that I look back on. I talk about it with my mom sometimes. I mean, there was a time where the FBI came and raided my house and they were looking for my dead grandmother because everything was put in her name. Um, there was all these strange occurrences of like, you know, waiting, sitting on the stoop where he's supposed to come and get you for the weekend and he never shows, right? And it's like, it's like out of a movie. I was right? just going to say like, that. That's like, wow. It's like out of a movie that where happened. they don't show. And then when they do show, there were times when they did show when he was hammered. And like, you know, you're in this car and you're like, I'm going to fucking die on this thing. And all of that stuff starts to play into who you become. And you're going to go one way or the other. And I've definitely gone all the ways, you know, as as the as the macho man, Randy Savage, once famously said, I've soared with the eagles and I've slithered with the snakes and everything in between. Right. Yeah. But you got to keep moving forward. It's like all those things leave impressions on your brain and you start to grow up really fast. So I started doing things at a super young age that I'm happy now because they made me who I am. But as having two young kids, I'm like, oof, that was too young. That was too young to do those things, I think. But again, I don't know, right? It just, I know life is what it is. So I was around I was all women, right? My my sister, my mom, my Nana, you know, I was around all women and it was amazing. It's an incredible way to be raised because I was able to have the toughness of where I grew up and have the, 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 I should say the, the, the smarts, the fragility, the smarts and the, and, and the, the intestinal fortitude and tenacity of the women who are around me. And I think that that prepared me for life. And I think that I, my mom was an artist. She's a dressmaker. My birth father before he, even though he led a extremely criminal lifestyle was a really wonderful artist. Um, a great designer was, was very smart, but again, never almost like Yusuf in Emily, the criminal never, he wanted more, but he was thrust into this life. Right. Um, and that was just the beginnings. But then I went through, you know, I did all the typical, you know, hectic stuff of figuring out who I was. I just got really fortunate that I figured it out uh, before I was too old. Did you get pretty deep into things? Because I know you came out with openly to say that you were dealing drugs and things like that. Were there times yeah. where you could have died many times? I've been in some really precarious situations. Let me fix this camera. I was in some precarious situations, meaning that I didn't know any better. I was I was not equipped for I was not okay. So if you're if you're from a family of lawyers, you kind of yeah, we're going to you're going to be a lawyer or you know, military families, a lot of guys follow or women follow in the footsteps of their father and join, you know, and go down range and join. So you're kind of raised by the thing around you. So when there's no one there, when the goal is survival, you figure it out. And for me, when it came to, you know, hustling and dealing drugs and doing whatever I was doing, it was just because it was the only thing I knew how to do. I always say that no criminal wants to do crime. They just do it because they don't really fucking know what else to do, right? No one's giving them another uh, avenue. And, and then you go, well, you can go work here. I remember that. I remember when I went to go try and work at Blockbuster my freshman year in college. And they were like, okay, so you have to wear tan pants. Go get those. I was like, I don't have any money to get tan fucking pants. And then they were like, okay, and you're going to get, I think back then it was like $275 an hour. And I was like, $275 an hour? 
I could flip an ounce and make 600. Why would I do that? It sounds ridiculous. Because again, I just always thought of life in time. So the scenario was never like, oh yeah, but you're not going to go to jail for fucking putting away fast times in Richmond High the wrong way. I wasn't thinking <laughs> that when I was doing it. Right. It was, it was just, it was just, I can do this and that seemed more reasonable. Yeah. And there was no one there going, it's not reasonable. Let me tell you why. Mm. It was just me and my own brain and the people who were around me who had the same mindset as me who were going, yeah, fuck it. Let's just, let's just flip some, let's go grab 20 pounds and do this. And you go, oh, cool. Cause it made more sense. So again, I think it's what your, your, what's in your toolkit. What do you have for you? And I didn't have, I had different set of skills, <laughs> as they would say. I didn't have the right set of skills, maybe I guess in societal terms, but I learned them. 